168 pounds super middleweight division in the World Boxing Super Series. Second out. So here we go then, the first of a scheduled 12 three-minute rounds in this World Boxing Super Series quarterfinal. The WBA Super World Super Middleweight title on the line because that is the mantle that George Groves, the boxer wearing the black trunks trimmed with red, won last time out at Bramall Lane with a six-round stoppage over Fedor Chudinov, claiming that world honor at the fourth attempt. His opponent operating out of their southpaw stance in the white trunks trimmed with black is Jamie Cox, brings to the ring a perfect ledger of 24 wins out of 24 contests. Competing in his first world championship bout tonight. He said that he has prayed and worked towards this moment since he was a kid. He said that George Groves has accomplished his goal. The analogy that he drew is that George Groves is eating lobster, whereas I am starving. Good right hand got through from the champion. But he says that his hunger, as Groves targets that right hand against the South Pole once again, Cox says that his hunger and his ambition, along with his talent, are going to be the key components in securing what he feels will be victory and progression through to the semi-finals. Cagey start from Groves, you can see the tactics, what he's trying to do. He's trying to catch uh, Cox with the right hand, there it is there. Look. So he's waiting for Cox to actually lead. Cox is he's obliging by leaving with that jab and, and Groves is trying to catch him with the right hand as he's probably going away. Cox is, is, is a southpaw who likes to come forward. The majority of southpaws sit back, but Cox isn't like that. He's an aggressive sort of southpaw. But that could be his undoing. He's got to watch what he's doing here, Jamie Cox, as he's coming forward, because we all know that George Groves has got a terrific right hand, and you can see quite clearly that's the punch he's targeting. Got that right hand caught. He's shooting it out once again. George Groves concentrated, holding it up to his chin while pouring with that jab, whipping a hard right hand just above the belt line of Cox. And he's looking for that counter right hand once again, and then a reverse one-two with a nice salvo from Groves. The right cross, short left, at mid-range. See, Ronald, what Cox has got to do, he's got to be in and out with that jab. He can't afford to hold his feet here, Jamie Cox. He's working well with his jab, but by coming forward like that, he just risks walking on to the right hand of Groves. So for Cox, it's got to be in and out, but for Groves at the moment, it's probably going to his game plan because he's starting to catch Cox with that right hand. Oh, good left hand from Cox, and it caught Groves flush on the ropes. He's trying to walk forward and close the distance on his man, and he was I don't think he's still recovered. Goes, he's walking onto another combination. He's great, Cox. But back he steps into the breach looks more. Ronald, I don't think Groves is recovered. He got caught with a terrific left hand from Cox on that ropes. He's come back. He's starting to hold a little bit now. But he was shaking there. Groves was. That was a good shot from Jamie Cox. Action packed opening round. Time, take your feet and you're See, guys, set him up, take set the him up. This is yeah. what he wants. He hasn't done an engine. Okay, I'll take right? So he wants you to go now. You're not he wants to walk so you Groves to cuts him now as he's coming take forward. Take Some good work to the body. Okay. Take him up, up Cox the towards the end of the round catches Groves with the Groves, super shot. Your balance and your smart. So Groves on the ropes here, gets caught there. That left hand from Cox, that was a brilliant shot. That was his best punch of the round itself. Close round, Ronald, that was. Second out, round two. Both boxers up off their stall early, ahead of round number two in this contest that is scheduled for 12. World Boxing Super Series quarterfinal action here from the SSC Wembley Arena. It was a hard punching opening round between the champion George Groves and the undefeated challenger Jamie Cox. Groves now looking to establish that straight left jab after he's looking for a counter right hand, which he just brought through there to the body of Jamie Cox. A lot has been made about the disparity in size between the two men. But John Costello dismissed all of that and drew the analogy of fighters who started their careers down the weight division before moving up the scale. Cox onto the front foot with another marauding attack. Groves retreating back to the ropes and both men landing with arcing hooks at mid-range. 
Good work from Cox on the inside there. Start of the attack, well there, the Cox and he's kept it going, Groves caught again, this is excellent from Cox. Cox pouring it on, Groves trying to find out of the corner, and this one an absolute firefight in the second round. Jamie Cox enjoying this, smiles towards his corner where John Costello is continuing to issue instructions. Cox on the front foot, going in pursuit of his man, cutting off the ring by moving to his left. Groves now, sharp shooting that left jab down to the body. There's a real look of confidence, isn't there, from, from Cox, but he's got to watch what he's doing here, Ronald, because Groves is still dangerous. Cox has landed the better shots in this round, but we know how dangerous Groves is with that right hand. He doesn't need to be get, get complacent here, Cox. Well, a lot has been made of the fact also, as well as the disparity in natural size, Groves Groves, a career lock, super middleweight, whereas Jamie Cox has come up the weight divisions. John Costello said that he's matured and he's a fully fledged super middleweight. But they're both loading up on their shots, and this one could well be ended with one punch. Both men possess that type of punching power. Jamie Cox with a 54% knockout ratio, and he's teeing off with Groves on the ropes once again. But as well as the disparity in experience and at the big time, you heard John Costello say in the corner he's questioning the conditioning of George Groves, and he has been characterized as a fighter who fades late in contests. But the way this one has started out, we may not get beyond the halfway stage. Well, they're both really going for it, aren't they? I mean... Groves is sitting back, he's probably waiting a little bit too long. Rather the faster shots are definitely coming from the challenge. As I say that, he walks on to that right hand that we spoke about earlier. Beautiful right hand. And there's the right hand success once again, and another one, and Cox is driven backwards. But rather than conceding ground, he launched another left hand. Both men choosing to fight fire with fire. The heads are clashing, Ronald, here. This is what the referee is going to say. Those heads really clash there. This one being fought at a torrid pace here at the SSC Wembley Arena. Come on, fucking slowly! Salah, forget that, come on. Come on. Dad, listen to me. Rinse. Come on. Rinse. Don't you? Come on, do the sword, man. Have a look at that. Yeah, we're all right. We're all right. Listen to me. Well, apart from the ending to the round, this was a good round for Jamie Cox. He catches Ro Groves here, pins him back on the ropes, keeps the attack going, sustains the pressure. The heads come dangerously close. They even clashed towards the end of the round. And then Groves did come back into it that last 20 seconds or so. And then he had some success. But this round was a good round for Jamie Cox. There's that big right hand that Groves landed in the last 20 or 30 seconds. So we're going to the third round. Just to emphasize the disparity in the levels at which both of these men have been operating. Jamie Cox competing in just his third scheduled 12 rounder tonight. George Groves so experienced in that regard. The three losses on his record have all come against reigning world champions. But he's being driven back to the ropes once again as Jamie Cox practically plowing a furrow into the ring canvas. The way in which he's planting his feet and launching bombs from both flanks. Counter right hand is a nice shot from Groves, who's remaining patient despite the pressure he's being put under. Good right jab from Cox, but it was again an effective combination on the counter from Groves, ending with a nice right left jab. Occasionally, um, Groves gets the reactions right. But then sometimes he's missing the target. The faster hands again are coming from Cox. He seems to be the boxer with, that's encouraged with the way it's going at the moment. Both of these men run the England team together. Oh, good right uppercut, then a long left from Groves. And Jamie Cox forced to hold on. Approaching the midpoint of this third round. And this one is being fought at a terrific clip. Left hand success once again after, for Groves after Jamie Cox got through with a right jab. You see, Ronald, that's what he can't afford to do there, Cox. After he's landed shots, he's falling in. And that's why Groves is having more success now. He's bringing him onto the shots. 
He's got to keep his balance a little bit better here. Jamie Cox, he's falling in, walking onto punches. Well, Steve Gray. Just having a word with Groves in rather forceful fashion about the hip toss he just employed. Mention the fact that this is Cox's only his third scheduled 12-round contest. George Groves has been the 12-round distance six times in his 16 scheduled 12-rounders. Heaps of experience, 182 rounds under his belt as he drives in a hard right hand and tosses Cox into the turnbuckle. Cox just beginning to fall short, or just falling short with that right jab. But finds the range with a good straight right to the body. You know, someone's going to get cut in a minute run. The heads are clashing too close. They are too close. It's happened before in, in a few of Jamie Cox's fights. He was in a real foul-filled encounter against Martin Fidel Rios. Either man could have been disqualified in that contest. Back in October of 2016. But he's keeping his composure well here, is Cox. Father ringside, 
and one wonders what will he have made of this successful first title defense which George Groves brought to an end in the fourth round courtesy of a sweetly timed shot to the body oh that was the shot wasn't it a right up a good come right hook downstairs into the ribs Jamie Cox couldn't get up big shot let's have a look at it here whips it round under the elbow there it was there right into the solar plexus and he felt it and he just could not get up from it let's have a look at it again he's on the attack he's trying to land a hook himself and there it was there actually into the ribs it wasn't the solar plexus into the ribs and he's a tough kid Cox is but that must have been a, a hell of a shot for him not to get up from that to be counted out who knows may have had some rib damage but there's the victor but up until that stage, it was a close contest indeed. And Cox played a real good part in it. Tested Groves with some big shots. But Groves responded and he catches him with this. Let's have a look at it. Bump, there it is there. Into the ribs of Cox. It's all over. Well, any veteran of the ring will tell you that when you take a body shot, the pain can often be worse than taking a shot on the chin. And sometimes it has a paralyzing effect. We've seen it in big fights previously, perhaps most notably when Roy Jones stopped Virgil Hill, unable to move, unable to control the legs, and Jamie Cox simply couldn't find his way back to his feet to beat the 10 count. He'll be immensely disappointed, but he has demonstrated that he can compete on this level at the elite stage. In this, the biggest fight of his life. Well, up to that stage, Ronald, I mean, Cox was well in it, wasn't he? He was coming forward, he tested Groves, he put him onto the ropes. I thought he was boxing a clever contest. He worked well with his jab. He was held, holding his feet occasionally a little bit too long, and he got caught with some shots, did Jamie Cox. But you go, you're going to against a world champion like Groves. But there, there's the shot that did the damage. But up until then, I thought Cox was boxing pretty well. There wasn't a lot in this contest at all. But it's a terrific punch. Give George Grove, Groves all the credit. He's found that shot from somewhere. George Groves improves to 27 victories, with 20 coming via the short route, courtesy of that paralyzing right hand to the body. That's a belted shot, you know, that is. More than I look at that, Ronald, then. Yeah, bang on the button. You'd sooner have it on the chin rather than in the ribs, mate, I tell you. 